So my name is Omar Rampasad. It is 3.57 p.m. August 15, 2019. So I'm going to show you my tagging. My chest is being scanned intermittently. And that's not always triggering this this uh, detector, and I know you can't really see the readings there because of the lighting, but even though it's triggering this, it's not triggering this one. But I am being scammed, as you can tell there. So <clears throat> I'm just going to take the camera off there and try to get you the reading. So if you look at the RF figure, so there is an EF, RF, and EMF, you'd notice that the RF numbers are changing. See the change, the change has taken place in EMF and the RF reading. So that's the scan that the other detector is picking up and alarming, but the alarm is not going off in this one. If you look at um, the graph at the bottom of the 17.4 there, the, the EMF reading, You'll see the graph going up and fluctuating. You'll see the spikes there as well. So those are the scans. So down to 77, 8, 70, excuse me, uh, 70.785 there, then all the way up to that 781, 1298.6, and all the way back down again. So see that cyclical nature? So that's the scan. So this is away from the computer. So the readings are split out. The EMF, the RF, and the EF the readings are split out. I can also get a reading, a combined reading of all three. So that is um, that is a, a really good sample of. Uh, what happens um, during the night as I sleep. Uh, sometimes the readings go up to, um, the RF readings go up to two, 300 while I sleep. Right now is 15.69. And uh, as you saw, it can go to all the way down to 0.6, you know, 665. And uh, at night when I'm in pain, it goes up all the way up to uh, six, seven hundred. So that's how much the um, the power is turned up. Now there is a an option there in that um, in that detector 
um, where I could download stored data for 24 hours. That's 24 hours worth of data. So you'll see all the fluctuations. So the, um, the, the increase or the decrease um, and the spiking will show the frequency of the scans in the body and the pulses. Now, um, I get up every morning with uh, um, different spots in my body being sore, and I notice my legs are getting dimpled. And um, I, it was, this has been happening for a long time, only now it's more so. Um, and I noticed that the spots that, now that I have this detector, the, um, the, the spots that are painful are actually lumps that has a high RF rating during the night. So they're, and also suddenly, uh, they get suddenly painful and heats up during the night. So radio frequency, of course, changes the, um, the nature of your, um, of your skin. The cellular structure of the skin can be changed by radio frequency therapy. So different frequencies have different results. Uh, so um, obviously the, um, the uh, frequencies being used on my thighs to cause um, a look of cellulite, only it's not cellulitis. These are hardened areas underneath the skin that gives a dimpled look to the skin, to the thighs. Uh, and it's meant, of course, to make it look really ugly and gross. Um, I'm correcting that. It could be corrected. Time and money. So this is one way to, to um, use up your time and your money, basically. Um, I also noticed that uh, when the RF reading around my head, especially, uh, is very, very high, um, my, um, my temperament becomes more, um, more sensitive. So I, I noticed that, um, I live alone, so uh, this is not um, my my uh, changes um, or the changes in my in my um, temperament is not is not um, it's not affecting anyone because I live alone. Um, but I noticed that the verbalization um, or the frequency of the verbalization is higher when the RF readings are extremely high. In other words, um, the, the radio frequency readings, and I'm trying to, to, as you can tell, I'm trying to choose my words really carefully here. Um, this is, a, this is a, 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 a causal relationship that I've noticed. Uh, I'm concluding that it is what's causing it. Uh, or one of the factors that's causing the, um, the changes in the sensitivity of, um, of, my, um, of my emotional state. So if someone were to want uh, to, want to um, set you up and have you react angrily and you're not aware of this going on, then it would be very easy to use a radio frequency device and have somebody go ballistic on you, basically. Um, this would work really well with, um, with kids and uh, men. Men are very um, easy, easily um, brought to temper, to anger, I should say. And um, their natural reaction is to um, to uh, to bring out the fighter in them, uh, so it, men will be um, more easily brought to violence if they are hit with these sorts of weapons. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a weapon, by the way. It could be a frequency generator, a focused one that could be used as a weapon, but not classified as a weapon. Is what I mean. Um, I mean, technically, anything could be a weapon. Uh, so yeah, so this is what I ha have noticed 
I noticed that the days that I verbalize, these readings are not only high, they are extremely high, especially around my head. So I have, I have, um, I have blogged about uh, about um, these readings before, and uh, now that I can separate out uh, exactly what um, what type of signals are coming in, high frequency, low frequency, because um, RFs, radio frequency, are high frequency signals. Um, these signals do affect your um, your moods affect your um, the sensitivity of your emotional state. And uh, so um, my verbalizing while I'm at home is really a good thing. Because uh, if you were to, to um, not deal with uh, the, the, um, the effects of these signals in a constructive way, then it can, it can result in in uh, other expressions of, um, of uh, the emotions that's caused by these external signals. So, um, so that's one observation that I wanted to talk about. Um, I talked about a conspiracy in my Twitter account. Um, I called the names of the people who are being talked about outside my window. It's an ongoing targeting programs that are targeting and updating is continuous. Um, so uh, the account, I was updated at the window. Um, the account is global and a lot of globalists have pieces of the contract. And I'm completely open so people can log in to my home and look uh, at me and um, inside my bedroom, bathroom, whatever. Um, but a link and a password, as I've been blogging before. Um, so this is a this is a crime that is being carried out by obviously people who are not following the law. The law does not matter. Um, it is a mis misogynistic crime. Um, a lot of women are affected, men are also affected, kids, but women are more vulnerable as our kids than men. Uh, they are taken advantage of more frequently than men. Um, the Epstein case um, is a glaring example of, um, of crimes against women and kids um, that goes on for decades and everybody knows about it and nobody does anything about it because, um, well, for, for a number of reasons, but um, fear, I think, mostly. Um, fear of speaking out because people who talk about what's going on are going to get killed or going to get terrorized or lynched, blacklisted and so on, impoverished. Um, so people don't talk. Um, the other reason is that pe some people just don't care. And another reason is people are taking advantage of the situation and making money out of it. And a lot of people fall into that category. There's a lot of money to be made in trafficking and taking advantage of people, um, victimizing and keeping people servile. I mean, everybody, it would seem, well, I shouldn't say everybody, a lot of people, um, it would seem like having slaves. Although when they themselves are enslaved, um, they don't like it that much. History will prove. But the same people who went through enslavement themselves and had to fight for uh, years and years and years uh, to get their freedom um, are the same ones who are turning around and trying to enslave other people. It's ironical. It's very, it is very, very ironical. But it speaks to human nature. This is what we are. We haven't obviously, um, we haven't evolved 
um, enough. We did not evolve enough to get past that um, the um, what I would categorize as a failure in our in the in the human condition, the need to enslave another human being. It's sad. It really is sad. For uh, I mean, um, for somebody who's really free himself or herself, a person who's really educated and really enlightened, um, just will not have the need to enslave anybody. There is absolutely no need to enslave anyone. Um, anyway, so uh, that's my commentary. It's going on um, 16 minutes. I think I'll stop there.